Hi there, I'm your APUSH Lady Boss, and today I've got a lesson plan for you, not just for AP US history, but also for AP World and AP European history. This lesson is focused on introducing the thesis statement for your students in a very scaffolded approach that will help every student be successful. I have my master's in American history. I have dedicated over a decade to teaching this course, and I am am an AP grader. So you can trust what I say and hopefully this is going to help your students to become more effective at thesis statements. So what students are going to do is they're going to be given this worksheet. And while they look through this worksheet, they are going to be following along with this video. So I have linked my YouTube video, how to write the thesis. And so what you will do as the teacher is you are going to present this video to your entire class at one time, and they will follow along with their individual worksheets. I've also given you access to these slides if you prefer to lead the instruction yourself. So at the beginning, you're going to go through the scoring criteria and decision rules. You're going to give them a simpler version of what a thesis statement is, and then you're going to take them through my step-by-step -step process to writing a thesis statement. So first, you want to decode the prompt, determine whether it is causation, comparison, continuity, and change over time. And then your second step you're going to have students do is to determine their argument, evidence, and counter-argument. And when you actually present this for your students, it's not gonna all populate at once. So you have you will pause the video to have students brainstorm their evidence. And the prompt that they're gonna be working through is this continuity and change over time prompt. Evaluate the extent to which transatlantic voyages in the period from 1491 to 1607 affected the Americas. Now, while this is an A-push prompt from 2021, this content is covered in all the AP histories. And so it's a great prompt to practice in any of these courses. So have them brainstorm evidence. You'll pause the video here and then you can provide them with additional examples. Then you want them to organize their evidence into topics and make sure that they focus on the skill of the prompt. So what I mean by this is have them actually use continuity and change. What are some continuities that are happening? What are some changes? And so here's some examples of how I organized it. Then the third step for students is to determine the counter argument and two main arguments. And based on the evidence that I came up with, I have chosen continental control as a continuity and economic changes and demographic changes as my main two arguments. So then you provide students with the formula. And again, this is also on their worksheet. So here's the basic formula that works for almost every thesis statement. Despite the counter argument, because evidence one and evidence two, my argument. So then I have given students a sample here. And actually, what you'll want to do is have them actually do this. So you'll want to pause the video here, and you'll have them write their own thesis statement. And then they can evaluate the one I have created. Despite the Americas remaining primarily controlled by American Indian tribes, because of significant changes in demographics and new economic opportunities and systems, the impact of transatlantic voyages was consequential and catastrophic. Now, the worksheet I've given to you is color-coded just like this. So if you have access to a color printer, you can provide them with this, or you could just give them highlighters and have them highlight on it. Highlighters or markers work just fine. Then I've provided some questions for them to check their own thesis statements. Does it have a line of reasoning and does it address the skill of the prompt, continuity and change over time? Does it have the analytic categories, your two evidence arguments? Does it present an opposing perspective? If it has done all of those things, it's going to be an excellent thesis statement that likely leads to a very excellent essay. Also, when I go through the video, I highlight using these skill words. So since continuity and change over time is the skill, using words like remaining, significant changes, new, those all illustrate change or continuity. And so encouraging students to use those types of word in their thesis is going to be key for creating an analytic essay. So then what students do is they're going to evaluate these thesis statements. So what I would have students do is evaluate the four statements immediately, and then you can continue the video where I explain why or why not the thesis statements did or did not get the point. 
And then here's here's what you can provide to students. Some students may still just be struggling and you wanna encourage students that it's okay to be where they are right now. And here's a method for them to still be successful. We want to move them to this more analytic thesis, but it's okay if they can't get there right now. So here's a more basic formula for students to follow with an example, which I explain. So that covers the video that's on YouTube and what you will do to start students with as a class. But then what they are going to do is they are going to move to the additional practice section. So the first two pages follow the video and then the additional practice gives them a new prompt. Evaluate the relative importance of causes of population movement to colonial British America in the period from 1607 to 1754. Now, again, this content is covered in all three of the AP histories. You could, if you are an AP world teacher, AP European teacher, you could adjust it to not be the British America. You could adjust it to French American colonies, Dutch American colonies, Spanish American colonies. You can make an adjustment um, based on where and when you're teaching this in your curriculum. I also like to use this prompt because it's not using the same skill. It's using the skill of causation, which is another great practice for students. So this time students decode the prompt on their own. They uh, brainstorm their evidence. And again, based on your level of students, you may determine whether you want them to do this individually or with a partner. I do not recommend doing this with a small group because small groups are gonna be more likely to have passive participants and you want everyone to be actively engaged in this process. So brainstorm their evidence, create their topics, and then use the formula, the counter argument, evidence, and argument, practice with their own here, check their essay. And then finally, I have provided some thesis statements for them to evaluate. So that's what students do. What, how I would conclude this whole activity is to collect these worksheets from students and then anonymously read thesis statements that your students have written here. So anonymously read them and have students evaluate. And if it doesn't reach the point, I would have students support the student who wrote this by giving them a way to adapt their thesis to actually allow it to earn the point. This really develops an, an atmosphere of collaboration in your classroom. It also develops an atmosphere of um, failure being okay. In this class, when I teach, I wanna make sure that students know it's okay to fail and we're gonna help each other get there. And reading these statements anonymously provides enough of a cushion against students who feel embarrassed easily. Um, while also uh, showing, student that, showing students that it's okay not to be there yet. So there's my lesson plan. I hope that this works very well for you and your students. If so, I'd love to hear from you. You can get this lesson plan with the link below um, in the description of this video.